Hello and welcome to BBC World News. Fierce fighting between Afghan government forces and the Taliban is continuing in the southern city of Lashkagar, the capital of Helmand province. These are reports, or there are reports rather, of an intense battle close to the police headquarters and dozens of families have fled their homes. It's very hard to get footage from the city, but these pictures were sent to us by a local resident showing the extent of the damage. The Afghan army is urging civilians to leave Lashkagar ahead of a major offensive against the Taliban. Meanwhile, the Taliban have now claimed responsibility for a car bomb and gun attack in a high security district in Kabul. Militants were apparently targeting the home of the acting defense minister who wasn't there at the time of the attack, which killed at least eight people. Our correspondent Sekundra Kamani is in Kabul. He told us more about this latest bombing. Yeah, so this was an attack that happened last night in a central area of the city. It began with a car bomb that exploded outside the gates of the defence minister's home. Uh, then four attackers, four gunmen, fought their way inside the home, engaged in an hours-long uh, battle with security forces. The defence minister, as you say, was not there at the time. His family was safely evacuated. Now, of course, this is, is raising concerns about the, the, the militant's ability to strike really at the centre uh, of the government. Uh, Kabul, whilst over the years it's seen, unfortunately, huge numbers of suicide bombings, uh, in recent months, uh, or really for the last year, it's seen less of these kind of complex, big complex attacks uh, suspected to be carried out by the Taliban. Many fear this is yet another escalation in the violence. First, we saw the Taliban uh, taking over more, more rural areas. Then we saw them uh, launching assaults on provincial capitals. Now we've had this attack right at the center of the government. Uh, but w one thing to note that, that's uh, more positive uh, for, for the Afghan security forces, last night also saw ordinary residents in Kabul, in other cities across the country, coming out onto their rooftops, their balconies, chanting Allah, who Akbar, God is great, in support in, uh, of the security forces, in defiance of the Taliban, celebrating the resistance that the Afghan security forces has been putting up against the Taliban. That's going to be a key boost to the morale of the security forces who are fighting the Taliban on a number of fronts at the moment. Sekunda Kamani reporting there from Kabul and Afghan MP Fauzi Kufi is the first woman deputy speaker of parliament in Afghanistan and a member of the Afghan government peace negotiation team that is in discussions with the Taliban in Doha. Her sister's house was damaged in Tuesday's blast. Um, just across the minister's house, there are also um, the, it's a residential area. People are living there, including my sister, uh, whose house was uh, damaged. Um, uh, but we are very lucky because no major injury. Uh, one of her security was injured and her son. If you look at the house and the destruction in the area, not only to the minister's house, but to the local uh, you know, people and to uh, the small business owners, it's huge destruction. Um, uh, it, it, last night was terrible. I could see a lot of people in front of um, the emergency hospital waiting for their loved one's uh, recovery. That was Afghan MP Fauzi Kufi speaking to me there a little earlier. Well, Isabel Musa Carlson is the head of office for the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs in Afghanistan. She joins us live from Kabul. Now, Isabel, thank you very much for joining us. You have um, a number of field workers who are out working at the moment in places like Helmand and Kandahar. We are hearing about um, alleged atrocities committed by the Taliban uh, on the ground. What are your uh, staff and colleagues telling you yeah thank you good afternoon um, what what our teams are saying is that there are indeed a lot of reports of increased civilian casualties destruction damages at civilian houses shop hospital and other key civilian infrastructure and and the UN and the humanitarian partners are very deeply concerned about the safety and protection of the people in in Lashkarga. Um, and, and in other locations as well, where tens of thousands of people are trapped by fighting. They are, as you say, trapped in places like Lashkagar. Yesterday we spoke to uh, General Sami Sadat, who was calling on civilians to leave the area. Are you concerned, though, that given the heavy fighting and given the pressure that the Taliban uh, are putting on civilians, that that will prove to be virtually impossible? During the fighting, it will be impossible. We, we see that civilian populations are trapped. 
between in between the front lines definitely but we also see a lot of displacement happening in all afghanistan at this stage and our teams in the field are, are meeting and this displaced population and are ensuring that uh, emergency aid is available for them is the taliban giving you safe passage and access to civilians who are in need of uh, aid and assistance uh, as humanitarians, we are uh, negotiating access uh, as necessary to ensure that we can um, bring the support required to the most vulnerable population. The humanitarian community calls of all parties to protect civilian and civilian infrastructure. Uh, we see a lot of schools that are being destroyed, a lot of water plants, uh, hospitals, which are essential we we see that um, access to care and health care is, is extremely difficult uh, and uh, and we really need to see the international humanitarian law being upheld in in those circumstances well, well and so um, and we negotiate for principal humanitarian access we're also hearing reports of bodies being left uh, in the streets and roads uh, in places like Spinbuldak in in Kandahar as well as in Lashkagar is that what your uh, colleagues are seeing uh, as well and we're we're hearing reports about revenge attacks we we're hearing the same the same reports um, and and for us what is essential is that we continue providing the the necessary support to the population uh, so you you are currently in negotiations and talks with the Taliban we're negotiating for access um, and in in line with the international humanitarian law and to ensure that um, the UN and our UN partners can remain present in the south uh, to assess the needs and um, for example we had an interagency response to um, on the 1st of August um, in Kandahar for over 2,000 people on uh, with food relief items water sanitation uh, hygiene and and so on so we can still provide support to the population in those areas of course these were people and populations that were in dire straits even before the fighting began there was a drought and of course they were suffering because of COVID as well yeah here in Afghanistan the the situation is a deadly combination of conflict drought and COVID we see 30% of the population is facing crisis level of food insecurity. Uh, more than 50% of the children under five may face acute, severe acute malnutrition. Uh, I recently visited the, the Kandahar Hospital and there the head of pediatrics was telling me that in the last six months, the first six months of the year, he saw a, a doubling of the children admitted in the um, acute malnutrition ward. And in fact, what I could witness is that we had several children per bed, um, really uh, in, in very dire situations. Isabel, thank you very much for joining us here on the program. Thank you very much. Bye.